The purpose of this short movie is to show you how to select the location for your project and then how to select an appropriate weather station. Now, weather stations, most people think of them as information collected over a period of time and then maybe interpolated to give you an average year. Um, but it's, if you think of it that way, remember that the climate is changing and all of this data is in a constant state of change. You've only got about 231 airports collecting this data and yet you want data that's specific to your site. You want to know more about microclimate. So a lot of groundwork has been done for you behind this product. And that groundwork is that a grid of about, uh, with spacing of about 20 kilometers has been created that covers most of the world. Um, and that means that you can find within an area of 14 kilometer, with a distance of 14 kilometers or 8.8 .8 miles, you can find a, a weather station that will have interpolated data that's more appropriate for your project. If you look at the illustration, the red icon is the site itself and you can click on it and drag and drop it to any location you want or you can type in an address and it will move you there on the map. You, you can see in the blue symbols that they are equally spaced. That's the 20 kilometer grid. They don't all show, they only show you know, a selection of weather stations close to your site and the distances are presented to you um, on the, the dialog box. The orange weather station is the one that's selected by default which tends to be the closest one but you can pick any of them and it's important that you can pick any of them because there might be large water bodies or there might be radical changes in elevation that mean that the, the closest weather station is maybe not the most appropriate. So getting on with the movie here, what I want to show you is how to, uh, to work with that data. Okay, here I've got the context of the site. So you can see that I've got surrounding buildings and these would be important because they will cast shade and they will affect the energy performance of the, the building being studied. The building itself can be created in many different ways that you'll see in other, other movies. Uh, but what's important here is that this is kind of a layout for maybe a school. The location of the site you can choose and you can change by clicking on the, this readout from the view cube where it currently is set in St. Louis, Missouri. I could pick on that and say set location and change that. I could also underneath my uh, sun settings I could go and choose the location from here to adjust it. Let me just kill that because I want to show you the other location for accessing the weather station data is under the Analyze tab and here, Location, Icon or Typing in LO. So there's at least four different ways that you can get to that information. I'm going to type in a project address and I'm just going to say San Francisco Airport and I want to do that because I want to point out the difference between some of the data that's there. San Francisco Airport, if I, if I zoom in on this area, first of all, you can see the location of the site. You can see uh, the selected weather station in orange, and you can see the interpolated weather stations around it. Now, the interpolated weather stations also include the ones that are called the uh, typical meteorological year data, or TMY2 weather data which is typically from airports and I can actually identify them by the year when it says year 2010 for that's actually Oakland Airport and if I came down here San Francisco if I move this a little bit you see it says year 2010 now the 2010 doesn't mean that the weather data comes from 2010 it just means that it's uh, because it's all updating all of the time so it's constantly reflecting changes in the collected data. But what it does mean is that that's kind of hard data from uh, the 251 sites, I think it is, that rep 231 sites that represent the TMY2 
collection sites. The other uh, weather stations are interpolations and they'll normally have 2004 or 2006 as a way of identifying them. This naming convention might change in the future but don't think of it as this is the year 2004 when it says 2004-2006 think of it as an interpolated state, station and when it says 2010 think of it as a an airport or, or something from a, a government source of, of data. So let me just move the station a little bit to show, uh, move the project to show you how this works. So I'm going to drag it and if I move it to another area in the world like that you see that what it does is show me a different selection of weather stations. So let me move it back closer to San Francisco Airport. Let me zoom in a little bit. So I'm just going to click on the zoom in and then use my scroll button to move my uh, my project. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to set it out on an area away from the airport. And the, the reason I want to do that is just show you that you, if you wanted to, you could pick on any one of the weather stations available to change which one you're going to use for the analysis. And so, um, in this case, that's probably the most appropriate. And now I'm ready to, and you might want to not be choosing the closest one because of differences in elevation or adjacency to large bodies of water or something that makes the closest uh, weather station inappropriate and you want to choose one that is more appropriate. Uh, you might also get some additional information from looking at the satellite images so you can see is it an urban area or a rural area um, and what kind of cover is there, is it vegetation, is it uh, hard surfaces like paving and buildings, all of this affects uh, your study. So just to make it clear here, if I bring up an illustration, what I want to show you is that kind of on the bigger scale of things, you can see the 20 kilometer grid that are the interpolated stations. And then in terms of coverage, if I bring up this map that shows areas that are uh, well covered in terms of the data. The only exceptions are areas where it's not really likely that you'll be doing a lot of uh, analysis for a building. They are the Arctic and the, and the Antarctic, they are desert areas uh, where there is not a lot of data to be had. So um, if you look at the coverage you'll see it's actually very, very extensive and, and uh, and uh, you can go with the data that you get for those areas.